What's up everybody? This is Carl Fisher coming back at you with six light burn tips that everyone should know. So let's start out with something that was introduced in 1.4 and we're going to take a look at warp. Starting out with warp, we're going to take an image, drop it on the screen, and I want to warp this image. And I might be a, a rotary user who does a lot of tumblers that are tapered or glasses or, or, or anything like that, that I need to warp this so that proportionally it looks right when I wrap it on my cylinder. So I'm going to select my image, and this applies to images, it applies to text, it applies to shapes. I can group things together, select multiples, and apply warp to any or all of them at one time. Uh, but I'm going to work with just a single image here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click Tools, Warp Selection. So Warp Selection puts four handles out there, puts one at each corner. And I can grab these handles and I can inv individually move them around and affect a warp onto this image. And I can play with that until I find something that I'm happy with and then save it and move on. However, I can also apply modifiers to it. So if I come back up here to warp selection, if I hold the shift key, the shift key is going to lock my horizontal. So it's gonna take my mirror image handle on the opposite horizontal side and everything that I do, it's going to duplicate that on the other side uh, in mirror. So as I warp out this way, again, it keeps that horizontal plane intact and applies the same amount of change to opposite sides uh, or the opposite corners. So that's holding the shift key. Now, if you are a Windows user, you can also use the alt key or for Mac users, I believe it's the command key and you can grab uh, holding that alt key down and it will grab your vertical mirror or your vertical partner, as I'm going to call it. So when I grab that top right, it's going to grab the bottom right, and it's going to move both of those together, keeping that vertical plane intact again. So as I move one, the other moves along with it. All right, so that's the warp tool. Moving into tip number two, we're going to look at the deform selection. So deform selection, similar to warp, allows me to basically work with any of 16 grab handles in the image. Now the big difference is when I grab these, it's not, it's not modifying a linear item, it's actually adding a, uh, a biaise curve to it um, and introducing uh, a curve distortion along the grab handles, similar to if I were using, let's say, a node added on a smooth node and dragging around and, and, and uh, applying curves to my image. So you can see I can play with this, drag things around, um, introduce curves uh, into my shape. And again, you know, this might be useful for, let's say you're doing uh, glasses and those glasses might uh, have a uh, more rounded shape to them, uh, narrower top and bottom and, and you know, um, fatter in the middle. So I can actually grab this and play with that and apply something like that to it or um, you know reverse that and apply something with a pinch to it and get something that's going to look right on my workspace um, or on my finished product or if I'm just doing you know artistic changes to it. Um, now similar to the warp tool your deform selection is going to have the modifiers of shift and alt or command um, holding shift now so let's say i bisect a line down the middle of this if i hold shift it's going to grab my mirror opposite grab handle so my corners are going to grab the opposite corners if i grab one of the inner edge it's going to grab my partner on the other side. And again, as I make changes, it's going to apply that change uh, in mirror equally to the other side. Now, if I do interiors, same thing. Uh, again, I'm holding shift and it's going to lock my horizontal partner um, no matter which one I grab. So now the same thing, but for vertical is if I hold my alt or my command, it's going to lock my vertical partner. So my top left corner is going to grab my bottom left and you know follow me in mirror image there same with my uh inner edges and my interiors it's going to um, maintain that relationship on my vertical partner so uh that is the deform tool 
Um, something cool I came across just playing with this, just for a little bit of fun, is I'm going to take these two. I'm holding shift to keep them locked together, and I'm going to drag that way down. And then I'm going to grab these two here, drag them up. And there you go. I've now folded that image over itself. Um, so it's just a neat little, you know, a neat little tool to play with. But it's it really is powerful, especially for those um, again doing a lot of rotary work um, that need to warp or deform or distort your uh, your images or your text to properly fit um, a not even shape, a tapered shape, a a, conve a convex concave type shape. So that's one and two tips. One and two is your warp and your deform. So next up, tip number three, uh, going back to radius tool. So I've covered radius tool quite a bit in the past. And, you know, if I come in here and I apply a radius to a corner on a shape, it's going to apply my selected radius um, to, uh, to those corners. Now, what you may not know is if I've got a radius applied here, I can actually come back and I can undo that. And so let's say I want to modify this. Um, I can come in here, click the radius tool again, and then click on in between my two uh, nodes, and it will actually change that back to, uh, and I'll get in close here. So if I'm radius, it'll change it back to a corner. Um, so I can come in and I can say, oh, that's, I don't want 10, maybe I want, you know, 30. And I can come in here and I can make a change there. Or I didn't want this to be radius. I want it to be pointed. Uh, so that will actually allow you to uh, manipulate those radiuses and remove radius uh, wherever you need to. Um, so, you know, you can remove it. You can change it. Um, you know, play around with it. It even allows you to uh, work with imported designs that might have been made in, let's say, Inkscape or, or Illustrator. Um, if there's a radius on your imported shape, you can come in here and as long as those two nodes there um, show that radius, you can come in and click between them and it's going to convert that back to uh, a corner. Of course, now it's going to make a liar out of me. There you go. Uh, convert that back to a corner. So that is tip number three, which is, you know, undoing a radius or altering a radius um, with the radius tool. All right. Tip number four, we're actually going to take a look at the Boolean assistant. So Lightburn has had Boolean operators forever, but everybody, you know, tends to get tripped up on what they actually do. So, you know, I could come in here, I could grab my two shapes and I could come over here and use my weld tool or my union or my subtract or my difference um, or intersection. And I could test it. No, oh, no, that's not what I want. Control Z and then test it again. Control Z until I get what I want. Or I could come up to tools and I could choose Boolean assistant. So now the Boolean assistant will allow me to quickly, as I hover over it or I can click on it, um, show me what each of the operators will do. So if I decide that I want subtract, I can choose subtract and I can hit OK and it will actually apply that Boolean to that. So again, tools, Boolean assistant, union joins them together, intersection gives me where they cross over each other, subtract is going to remove one from the other depending on the order of selection, uh, subtract A from B or subtract B from A. So those booleans, you know, become a little bit easier when you can see them kind of as a real-time update and make a decision on what you want. All right. So tips number five and six are more of a user interface or workflow uh, workspace modifiers. So did you know that just about all of the most common tools in Lightburn have hotkeys with them? So if I wanted to, for example, uh, trace, I could come in here and I could hit Alt-T, and it will bring up my trace or you know I could come in here and uh, if I'm zoomed around I can hit control zero and it will you know zoom me back out to my work view so there's hotkeys for so many things in Lightburn to the point where they were actually running out of hotkeys that made sense so what they introduced is a hotkey editor so under my file menu I can go to edit hotkeys and for any tool in Lightburn, and if you want to find it quickly, there's a search here. So let's see, uh, let's see, I don't know, start. So start laser, start wizard, whatever. Um, so I can come up here, I can find exactly what function I want to make a 
make a change to and then i can come in here and let's go to mo let's go to modifiers modifiers is a good one and let's say i want to do circular array and i want to do alt c so i can come in here select circular array go down to my shortcut press alt c and there you go so i've now now it's going to tell me it's already used by capture uh cam uh, yeah capture camera image so i guess i need to come in here first clear that so capture camera image is saved and now let's say i want to apply that to circle array alt c is applied to circle array and there you go so alt c is now my circle array let's say i want to let me clear my search and i want to uh round corners well alt r now in my case alt r is actually taken over by um my uh nvidia geforce so i can't do that let's see control alt r sure why not so control alt r there now it's my round corners so you can come in here and make any changes you want to this and once you have something you're happy with you can actually export this as a backup or if you're working from multiple machines if you're using two machines one in the you know one for design one for running the laser um, you can export it it will export it as a lbhk file and then you can go to the other machine and re-import it or depending on your workflow you could have several sets of hotkey files and load or unload them as you need to based on the workflow that you need at any given time and then you know if you really get kind of out of whack here you can come in here hit reset all hit OK, and it'll put everything that you've changed back to the default settings as they came from Lightburn. So if I go back to Capture Camera Image, which I changed earlier, you'll see that it reapplied Alt-C as the shortcut there. So editing hotkeys is great, especially if you're used to tools in other programs, you know, whether it be Illustrator, Inkscape, whatever, you can kind of tailor this to match your muscle memory for your hotkeys to do different things, or just whatever you find more convenient for you. So that was tip number five. Tip number six is you can actually uh, toggle the drag handles in the interface. So when I select a shape, we've got all these different handles up here. So I've got, you know, I've got resizing, I've got rotate, I've got skew uh, handles, I've got my center grab for my move. I can turn those on and off. So if I don't ever use rotate and I find myself when I go to resize accidentally hitting rotate and I decide I don't want those, I can actually come down here to the very bottom and I can toggle off the rotate handles. So now I can no longer rotate when I grab that corner. So, you know, if you don't want something turned on, you can now turn it off. Um, shear. If I don't want my shear and my skew, uh, you know, uh, grab handles there, I can toggle those off. If I don't want my move, or if I don't want my resize, I can toggle all of those off. So, you know, this is, it's, uh, you know, it's just another way for you to customize this to basically fit the way that you work. In this case, I've got rotate and nothing else. So, you know, by default, these are all turned on. And you can just come down here and turn these on and off anytime you want. And it will, you know, affect all the shapes and all the grab handles that are available for any shape that you select. So there you go. So that's six tips. Now, for those of you who stuck around, I did promise you, maybe I promised you, I don't remember, um, a bonus tip. So if you're not aware, Lightburn has the ability to quickly create QR codes. So if I come in here and I choose tools and I say create QR code, and I'm going to tools, create QR code, and I'm going to drag, and you'll see it locks me to a square orientation. And I'm going to drag that out as big as I want it. And then it's going to ask me for my input. So, uh, so I can, you know, do contact information if I want to do a virtual business card, my Wi-Fi hotspot information for those that want to enable scanning to connect to Wi-Fi, raw content. So if I want to do this and I hit OK, so what it's done is it's created this, this QR code for me. And I'm gonna set that to fill so that when I look at my preview, I get a filled QR code. Now go ahead and scan that. And if you scan that, you're gonna see that it's gonna take you to, that's right, my YouTube homepage. And from there, you can be sure to subscribe and you know, take a look at all of the videos that I'm offering, both on Lightburn as well as just general workflow in the laser and or design CAD type environments. Be sure to hit the notification icon so you get notified every time that I launch a, 
a new video. So that's it. So that's six tips everyone should know in Lightburn, plus a bonus tip with the QR codes. I do have another, you know, five or six tips that I'm going to be doing another video on here in the near future, as well as an upcoming video on manipulating text and looking at all the different ways that you can manipulate text in Lightburn. Everything from bending and distorting to placing on paths to skewing, just all the different ways that you can uh, affect text. So that look for that video coming in the not too distant future. Remember, most of the information I'm giving here is actually coming right from the Lightburn documentation site. So I'm either looking at the release notes and the news site, or I'm looking at the documentation site and pulling some of these lesser known features out for you guys and kind of highlighting them and, and showing them off and bringing them to your attention for those who may not have seen the, you know, the release notes when these features were launched. So definitely, you know, take some time, comb through that documentation and get familiar with it. If you don't have Lightburn, make sure you go grab it. There's a free trial available and it is by far one of the most affordable and most powerful software tools that you're going to find for working with your laser. So until next time, hopefully this helps you guys and uh, stay tuned. We'll talk to you later.